What's worse, when you're known for one design, a great design, one that has pivoted the entire industry and affected the way it is seen today, or the fact that you can't get away from its shadow, and that no matter how hard you try for the rest of your existence, you will never be able to achieve that same kind of success again. That's the Code 1159. Audemars Piguet's Code 1159 is one of the most interesting watch case studies in the world because it goes to show no matter the brand, no matter the prestige or the watchmaking, you can create a piece that does not appeal to a large consumer base. As most of us know, this watch received a rocky reception at first when it was introduced in 2019. And it was down to its design, I think that's fair to say. Many would argue that this watch looks like it came out of a Hugo Boss catalogue, which is extremely unfortunate. And where I can see both sides of the argument, I think it's infinitely more unfortunate for Audemars Piguet. Because of how much work and effort and energy they've put into this collection, the end result is a watch that just does not wow people. It needs to be made crystal clear before this video gets any further into the dissection that we are not criticizing Audemars Piguet's watchmaking. These watches, when taken down to their mechanical core essentials, they are some of the most incredibly designed timepieces in the world. Now, I like to look at it as how you would interpret cars and the way that they are presented to you. Code 1159 and its exterior pieces reminds me of something like a Honda Accord with a Rolls-Royce engine and interior inside it. Yes, it looks great on the inside and when you take it apart, but on the outside, it still looks like a Honda Accord. And that's where the Royal Oak was such a success. The reason why that watch has made the history that it has. Not only does it have the incredible watchmaking, thanks in part to Jaja Lecoutre and their contributions, but you know, because they sourced outside help and they brought a jewelry designer in to create the externals, the result is you have one of the most important revolutions of sports watch design on the outside. And it's this marriage of design and technology that has made the Royal Oaks such a powerhouse, such a key defining watch today. Unfortunately, the Code 1159 looks the other way. At least first impressions tells you it's an extremely simple exterior with a highly complicated interior. And if we look to the machine work that's been implemented to these cases and the evacuated lugs, the octagonal center ring for the case, the highly dynamic sapphire crystal that plays in the light. There is a lot about this watch and this collection of pieces to digest, but first impressions matter. And unfortunately, there wasn't much of a splash when these watches first arrived on the scene. We can all agree that the Code 1159 is at its peak when it incorporates its most complicated movements. Chronographs, perpetual calendars, and as we will later see, the Universal, which is Audemars Piguet's most complicated watch to date. But when we look to the simpler things, the time and date variation, these watches have not been able to wow many. Partly because of the exorbitant prices these watches were offered at, partly because the majority of them were precious metal. In fact, all of the first generation watches were in precious metal, so you're already pricing out a large portion of your audience. But it's simply because the design, the exterior, the first impressions doesn't come across as anything special. It in fact comes across as something generic. And for all of us enthusiasts, that's unfair. Because if your primary watch is the Royal Oak, how is it possible to surmount an insurmountable watch like the Royal Oak? How can you compete with a watch like that that has defined generations of watchmaking? So the first part of this case study is addressing how it's virtually impossible to outdesign one of your best, most popular and defining watches in your collection. The second part of this case study, instead of lying down, letting it be, giving it a rest and moving on with another collection, doubling down and attempting to reinterpret the watch yet again. It makes you question whether Audemars Piguet has invested so much money into this property they cannot afford for it to fail, or the fact that they are just so driven that they feel that this is going to be the next thing and they're not going to give up regardless. You know, all things considered, you have to admire their tenacity. So let's eliminate the idea of prestigious metal for the externals and just go with stainless steel. More accessible, more sports oriented. Out with the polished plots and the fairly flat dial. Now with some color, some sunburst, some tapissery finishing. And incorporate a dial design with a handset and batons that looks very similar to the Royal Oak. I look at these baseline models, these entry-level models, and I feel it's a step backwards. Compared to the first pieces that were arguably more fashion-focused, with a touch of a sportiness to them, you could easily tell that they were a different part of the family and collection. With this new setup, it looks like they are pulling too much inspiration from the Royal Oak to an extent where it looks even more generic. 
In a similar light, the exteriors of the chronograph feel exactly the same. Not necessarily ambitious or adventurous, just a toned down version of a Royal Oak dial. I think the saddest thing of all is that when you step back and you look at these base models, the time and date and the chronograph collection, as strange as it might be, they don't scream Audemars Piguet to me. The safetyness in its design and presentation comes across as any other watch. And without that wow factor, these kinds of pieces aren't going to hold people's attentions for very long. But it has to be said again, for all the negativity surrounding their designs, for the, I think, unashamedly generic looking first impressions that they have, the love and care that goes into the actual watchmaking is second to none. And what should be done for this collection instead is to make the watchmaking the centerpiece, to focus on skeletonizing these dials and to allow people to appreciate and enjoy the mechanical artwork that's on the inside. Express the beauty of the watchmaking instead of hiding it behind such a pedestrian dial. The brand did this very early on with their first skeletonized variation of this piece, or even the perpetual calendar with the aventurine dial. These are absolutely stunning because the beauty of the dial is there. It expresses itself enough to stand on its own next to the exterior. And with Audemars Piguet's now most highly technical watch they've ever created, the Universal, this piece is pure artwork deserves to be celebrated. A flyback chronograph, a minute repeater, a flying tourbillon, a grand sonnery and a perpetual calendar inside one watch. This is the flagship and this is what the collection should be defined by. This is one of the most impressive watch movements ever created to date because the Gregorian calendar doesn't even need to be reset mechanically. This watch does it all for you. So in the next 400 years, the watch doesn't need to be adjusted. It's just insane. So from their rocky start in the beginning, it does feel like they are finding their way, especially with the high technicality that goes into these new calibers. I get this impression that because the Royal Oak is now off the table, that nobody can just walk in and buy the watch. Especially when we look to the time and date watch, AP has gone down the route of creating a piece that is homologous. In a way, giving you the impression that you have a Royal Oak inspired design in lots of ways, but will never truly be one. You know, as a simple exercise, I'm going to take this watch and I'm going to fill it with numerals on the dial. And let's see what it looks like. I much prefer the ambiguity of a watch like this that celebrates itself as being something that is both a sports and a dress watch hybrid, especially a piece that isn't offered on a metal bracelet. I believe that these simple models deserve to be in a category on their own. And instead of trying to piece parts together to be a Royal Oak light, it should be its own thing. We need to all understand that so much creativity and design has gone into this collection, even though it might not show itself. And the hardest part is that when you're surrounded by such a successful watch, like the Royal Oak Collection, the Offshore, the Concept, many other designs, it's extremely difficult to move away from it. It must be so hard to look in another direction and to create something truly successful as a design. Especially when you're segueing out of the sports watch genre and focusing on something more dress oriented. You know, if I was given the creative control around this product, I would think of it as the modern day chronometer. I would want it to be extremely simple, but something scientific. Something that has airs of a 1940s design in a modern package. A presentation that's unoffensive, that screams elegance. And all the while, on the inside, has some of the most highly technical and complicated movements to date. The conclusion then is that this collection and family of watches has tried to flip the script on itself yet again. And it's hard to know whether it will be a success or not. It shows you how difficult it is to be original when you are creatively suppressed by one of the most dynamic sports watches in the world. It's very hard to replicate that level of success even within your own design house. It's a complicated process of creating watches that will sell, that have designs that are derivative, and how we, as enthusiasts, see it presented to us. This 1159 collection interests me a lot, on many fronts. I think that's why it's such a good talking point. It's not just about the safety of its design, but it's that there is true potential in this collection if the focus was in the right place. I think it's worthy of the Audemars Piguet badge. This is not the first time the brand has ever created out there designs before. But writing that line of a safe design has its consequences. I'd really like to know your thoughts about this collection in a few words. I, I would imagine that the results are going to be quite unanimous, the opinions. But I do know that there are some of you out there that really like this watch. And I'd like to hear why. So thank you for taking the time to listen to my lecture. This deep dive on the Code 1159 collection. And I'll see you in the next one.